fantastic way for you to regret ever crafting Yogg-Saron. But I think <laughs> if you evaluate things at a bigger picture, perhaps it wasn't the discard Warlock that is so strong. Maybe it calls into question what was Team America thinking by bringing this Warrior deck. Well, we're going to see our third shot and find out. This is the kind of matchup that I think they're looking for, though. It's something right. that is more board-centric and is looking to deliver a lethal blow with board there. With, like, that's <laughs> really the, the, the key there, is I don't think Rainy Hour and crew are going to have infinite resources this time around, unless, of course, you know, they have, like, a Shutterwalk thing going on. They, ha they don't have infinite resources, per se, but they have Hagatha. Which is a lot. It virtually feels like infinite when they play Hagatha early. I'm actually keeping Hagatha against this warrior deck. Oh, yeah. Not even close. Zero question about it. Hagatha, one of the best cards you can play against a kill-all-your-stuff deck. Yes. So another way to generate a ton of resources. Now, granted, I think the warrior deck is not bad at its core idea. The only problem is that I just haven't seen a way for the warrior to directly win. Long gone are the days where you can just not actually have a win condition. Your main win condition would be to do nothing. Even fatigue decks actively do stuff. Togwoggle swaps your deck, and then you like start naturalizing them, for example. Yeah, I want the days of just tango back. But like, you can't win just by hero power. Okay, so Dr. Boom Mad Genius is the way you win. Well, he did say Doctor. he was gonna make Dr. Boom proud. And so that, to me, inherently would spell that out, right? Like, that's the way you win. You're Dr. Boom. You make him proud. Of my jungle. A proud pup. Well, uh, they picked up a, a pretty big minion in the Primordial Drake. But, you know, Earthen Might only will take or on the, the rush minions with Sparks. Sparks, that's what they're called, excuse me. They land onto it. They are eyeing this. Radiant Elemental? Oh, the Radiant Unstable! Woo! Oh! Oh! How did they do that? Infinite evolution. Literally. They gotta hurry up. Just go as far. They were just like, they realized, like, oh my gosh, we got it. No, they got Fairy Dragon! Fairy Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you can't target that! That's so funny! What if they land on, like, the un- Oh, they oh, the glass thing. Their, their goal is to get the Tarantus, and then they, and there's a hard stop. They can evolve the Radiant Elemental. Anaconda, no. There are beasts. There's Quarter Creepers. Yeah, my Anaconda, no. That's a really good minion, but not against this deck. And... Hey! Oh. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I, thought, I was like, they're going for the... <laughs> Can you imagine if they would have gotten the radiant and gone immediately in the fairy dragon bear shark? <laughs> okay, so that was really fortunate sequencing there because they just landed. <laughs> so they we can't high see five. See, the power of friendship is not just a meme; <laughs> it's actually real. They took the magic marker sharpie and everything and drew the smiley face. And you know, I also gotta say, it's awesome that Korea, the Koreans met up and played in person. Cause you know, they, that's the spirit of the competition that they're connected online. Like obviously in America and Europe, they can't do that. In Taiwan, they had the option to, but they all chose to play from their homes. Granted, cause it's like four in the morning, but Korea decided to start the tournament at midnight and <laughs> hang out and late and just meme on some of the world's most renowned content creators and players. Let's go. I love it. Well, it was an explosive start. Execute has brought it to a, a bit more of a screeching halt, but this is what you keep Hagatha for. Yeah, they executed a 1-1 one -one in concept, right? Because you combined <laughs> the unstable evolution on the 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 spark. The spark was a 1-1, one -one. <laughs> and you, you had to execute that minion. Well, it did get plus 2, plus 2. True, true. I mean, cards were spent on it. Unstable Evolution counts as like half a card because you're splitting it, and then of course the Earth and Might. Which replaced itself with Which a gigantic itself. explosion. How funny would it be if Warrior won it? Uh, it's a very winnable game. I mean, again, this is the type of deck that you want to face. A deck that right. just plays stuff. They don't have a crazy infinite engine. Even though we got to see Radiant Unstable Evolution on turn three. Uh, they don't have, like, this extreme, ever-growing resource. 
it, it's a much more fair playing field. And so, you know, Hagatha is looking to break that, but those are just spells that you're playing against. I think that's where armor total is, is really at its finest. True, and Dr. Queen Mad Genius can also generate so much value. But, I mean, Warrior still looked in a really good position after we are kind of calming down from what just happened. I will say, though, I've seen Hagatha do some amazing stuff, and you have to add, you have to think about the spells that were added into the mix. There's a couple of really useful ones, like Voltaic Charge or Voltaic Burst. The Storm Surge. The Storm Surge. Or Storm Bringer. The Storm Bringer, the one that transforms to legendary minions, oh, and also, wonder. you know, Eureka, which is not necessarily as good, but all you need is, like, that one Storm Bringer to really bring, into the, uh, bring onto the board, and then your opponent can't answer it. He's a mad genius. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, they haven't earned that title yet. So far, they're just mad right now. <laughs> and if I'm Korea, I think the moral victory was claimed for this game. They even play the Rune Spear. This is my favorite team ever. Well, yeah, that's, the Rune Spear is what we saw in game one. Oh, right. That's right, the first series. Yeah, you got me excited about Rune... I thought it was the Rune Spearing I, yeah. uh, Stormbreaker. My, uh, my memory thought it was the Even Shaman that did it, but you are correct. It is this one. It's, just, it's awesome. I mean, we're approaching Hagatha. It's about to get real. Board. Yeah, you know, if your opponent uh, Primordial Drakes here, obviously they wouldn't account for that, but we know it's in the hand. Then you feel a lot better about playing Hagatha compared to killing off your own board. But still, Hagatha is super crucial to their win condition. Part of the problem, though, is you know that they have Harrison Jones. I'm oh, feeling yeah. better about this half of now. Oh, I am raring to go. Oh, yeah. Time to curse this land and generate spells. I'm ready for some major fireworks. God I mean, I'm, I'm talking about getting Stormbringer and then grabbing the Spellstone. And then using Spellstone to copy whatever mini you get. Okay. I mean, we're talking about fireworks. Lich King. Trainers of the highest. Oh, the the Harrison for the Rune Spear. I'm still getting familiar with uh, the Doctor Boom Hero Power Art, but that's the Discover Mech so one. Okay, so I think overall the Lich King is just much stronger. Oh, yeah. Lich King discovers, you know, Death Knight cards. Those are great. Not only that, but it makes your opponent kill it. And right now, that's not available for Rainy Hour and crew. And so when Lich King lives, it, it, I mean, he says there must always be one. You know, a lot of times he dies instantly because he's so powerful, but right now he's living. Well, we're going to try to see if he can draw cards and see uh, if he can pick up X or something else. Unstable. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You can use the Earth and Might and get another Radiant. <laughs> Still has a lot of ways to draw cards here. <gasps> Crushing hand! So you play an elemental, hope that you draw the spell stone. <laughs> Rita's like, yeah, I'm really good. And yeah, they're just laughing, man. Korea's having the time of their lives, and Ant's just alone on an island right now because <laughs> he can't talk to Allie. A lonely island, indeed. Gosh. It's like, does he draw cards on their cards? Yeah. Eight mana. <laughs> the the armor gain, though, from the Flash Shield, really nice. Yeah, that was the gain seven armor hero power. Oh, Dr. Boom Mad Genius uh, gives all your mechs a rush, and then it swaps the hero power every turn. Yeah. It's a really delightful card. The hero power that's up now is summon three 1-1 one, one mechs. Mm -hmm. And so because Dr. Boom's uh, text, they all the mechs have rush for the rest of the game. <laughs> hello, hello. Giggling Inventor with the Stormbringer. Oh boy. Oh, plus the, uh, they've got the Primal Fintotem. Oh yeah. Boom. Comes the boom. And is laughing. He's living it up right now. Well, I, I think they dang. feel like they're finally in a safe-ish place to play their game plan, which is to win the board and then turn the tides through Dr. Boom Mad Genius. This 
would the only be thing is, remember how Shaman only had like th four cards or five cards, and it looked like they were outmatched against the Lich King. Just look at how they recovered. Picked up some really nice spells in Crushing Hand and Lava Burst. Now, uh, Ant's left to pick up the pieces here. Wants to oh, deal with all these one twos. Keep killing stuff. Yeah. Killing stuff's my favorite. Yeah, I love this. You just blow up everything. Part of what Dr. Boom Mad Genius's power is, too, is because you end up discovering mechs um, every now and then with its hero power, you kind of have that Death Stalker or Rexar effect where if you just get this stick of mech, it can compound upon itself because you can magnetize most mechs these days. Seven more armor on deck. Yeah, which is actually not exactly what Ant wants at this point. I think he wants more board impact and stuff, dealing one damage to all enemies or to discover a mech or even to deal, just deal three damage. Those are all the abilities that you can get um, off of whatever comes out on the, the, yep. the hero power. Is it time for the Stormbringer? I don't think you get that many more minions than what you have right now. It's a true story. I'd be really tempted to Stormbringer here. It's a true story. And you run into hand space issues too. Okay, okay, they're going to use other things instead. I mean, granted, if they're able to keep their minions alive a little bit, and they know that Dr. Boom can't transform his hero powers at the end of the next turn, they can squeeze out one more minion with the Primal Flood token and still have enough mana to play the, the Stormbreaker. Okay, I, I like this. It makes sense. As long as our opponents don't have Warpath, which they do, or a, a, a Blood Razor. I like being greedy with it. I do too. I think this game is going to go long, so you need to be greedy with it. There's a lot of uh, low-powered legendaries this in the, the pool right now. There's like Modessa oh, Sansara as a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. You can get, you know, and then the traditional ones like Blood Mage Thanos and Edmund Van Cleef and Nat Pagel. It's yeah. Like, you can't really look at like averages. Like averages can be a good guideline, but mm. you have to look at like the volatility of it. Yeah, yes. You know, like say there was like one minion that had like a million power and a million health. But then there were, you know, a hundred of them that they're like two twos. Yeah, like then it's like the average is like a reasonable stat line, but you know, it's not necessarily a good example. But you guys get what we're talking about. The standard deviation is actually so fairly high. To the well, point where some bad Stormbringer stuff. succeeds, and <gasps> they have Show. rush. They can they can attack, and then he can evolve Dragon Caller Lana. Yes, they can also evolve the Beast, which uh, is Death Rattle. Your opponent summons a three three, so fairly important to get that one gone. I feel Catherine like Katharina would actually recruit uh, a, quarter creeper. a quarter creeper as oh, well. Oh, yeah, he could portal Dimly to kill off the Katharina and then evolve the, the quarter creeper. I think it's still better to evolve 9 to 10, though. The, the power difference between that is so massively high. Yeah, I think with Hagatha rolling in the hand context, you're not really that worried about 3 3, so the beast probably just sticks around with a big stat line. Yeah. Plus, you have the rune spheres, you can just whack the 3 3 immediately Objection. and transform again. Must you gotta wait. You gotta wait a little bit yeah. for that. But this is where Hearthstone is at its most fun. Is when you have all these scenarios where you think about like, okay, never have been put in this scenario. What's the optimal way to play this? Game? No unstable evolution. They want maximum value off of it, and they can play a quarter keeper for free and essentially upgrade it to high, uh, yeah, high power. Like you have enough stuff on board right now. Like your opponent needs yes. to take care of this. So having the Dragon Caller Alana be upgraded to a ten a lot of times just means the exact same. Result. Oh, well, I think it's the best case scenario, right? Because then they would have had two minions on the other side of the board to deal with if Feels uh, like it. Katharina died. Discover a mech here. Little things important. You know, very much like Rexar as well, you want to be sometimes be just taking the most efficient option just so that right. way you can actually use the Now they have double quarter creeper unstable evolution. Yeah, and they're about to go way deeper into these dungeons. Well, they can uh, shield oh, one. You know, it's like, ah, oh, should we use it? They already transformed unstable evolution. They already, but you know, they already used the Stormbringer. But the answer is yes. Definitely. Rainy Hour and crew looking to pick up any other minion to pair with this unstable evolution. Flame Song Tom's not bad. So you can play that first, see what spell you get. Oh, you can eureka out the quarter creeper as well. That way you can pay six mana for your two five. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I'm wondering if there's any scenario where Eureka can be safe for like a really powerful surprise. Because it seems like most of this deck is really cheap. Well, if they're going to use Eureka now, I'm just going to guess they don't have like something super powerful in the deck. This also right. gives them two eight drop evolutions. The icy winds nice, of nice. Damn. Oh! Oh, you could Eureka that at some point down the road. Because Dr. Morrigan's Death Rattle, it's, it's the new Warlock legendary minion. Oh. It's Death Rattle as you swap it with a minion in your deck. Oh, you said they didn't have infinite resources. And so if you get a Eureka from Hagatha and you Eureka out Dr. Morrigan, they just swap with each other when they yeah. die. And then assuming that they ever die, you will have, you know, essentially infinite okay, ways then. to stay alive against fatigue. That's in a hypothetical scenario. Of course, most more than likely your opponent is just going to ignore it and then just go face. Yeah, but look at the situation that's happening here. Like, Ant's goal is to basically just kill everything in a row. Like, it's not an unrealistic possibility to see something like that happen. Okay, then. Yeah, and Dr. Boom's emote there is about what I feel, too. Well, they have Dead Man's Hand. So in some weird hypothetical scenario where... Shaman's able to keep generating like a lot of resources and they won't fatigue and then Warrior has Dead Man's Hand and a bunch of removal. This game could end up in a tough. Oh no. But we are about half an hour away from that conclusion. It's way more than half. We're an about hour. what's the turn an like? hour and a half away from like that conclusion. Seventy something turns. It's fifty turns each, it's like hundred turns total. Oh, around there. Not not exactly. That's one hero power. Yeah. I mean, this rune spear is going to get Harrison as well. But the spell that comes off of it could be huge and impactful. Discovered Battlecry min minion. I was really hoping for like a shutter walk <laughs> to do something really crazy here. Harrison Jones is going to be the first priority, and you do have the hand space for it. You have nine cards. That's Liking it so far. And remember, this is a game to just fight for a little bit of those extra tiebreakers and some pride, because USA is down 0-2. The series has already been decided, so this is kind of just icing on the cake for Korea. That's this why. This game is awesome. This game was sick. <laughs> In all the right ways. I, I love when games are just big and dumb. It just excites me. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't see the end in sight. Job's done. <laughs> okay. I mean, I could realistically see a tie happening. That excites me. So the awkward thing about Thrall Desir and Hagatha is they both kind of work in the same direction. Even though, yes, it's fantastic to be able to have, mm. you know, the Thrall and... and to upgrade the minions and the Hagatha for the spells. There are scenarios where it's like Thrall has no minions to evolve and because you spent all of them for Hagatha. Oh, got the big Ooh. roll. Throw up the prayer Ooh. hands. Get cracking on that life total. Gluttonous Ooze to strike back against the weapon. Two mana Bloodlust. Did they play Prismatic Lens? They played Farsight. <laughs> Yeah, just the news and the blood loss almost switch costs. I love Prismatic Lens. Four mana Paladin spell. Uh, you draw two cards, a minion and a spell, and you swap their costs. Wow. I love that card. All right. There's the DMH. Yeah, so the Dead Man's Hand, uh, the plan is to uh, essentially just have an infinite train of mechs. Not actually infinite, but effectively do so. Oh, I can't. I, I really. Oh, now I okay, really then. want the Eureka on the Dr. Morgan. <laughs> I just really want it. I want it more than anything right now. How do you even prioritize removal? Like, here's the thing Dr. Boom's supposed to be really good because of this hero power, and I feel like they've hero powered like twice while having up for six turns or so. Okay, not the greatest swap. You're pretty happy about that. 
get to laser down the Bright Eyed Scout. Yeah, so it's reasonable so far, but now with the gluttonous news coming down. Summon three one one max is the next year power. <gasps> the Eureka, please. Oh please. Please. Game, I've never needed you to give me a Eureka more in my life. <laughs> they could evolve into another Dr. Morgan! Another Dr. Morgan! <laughs> That's the way! That is the way. Oh, another weapon. Okay, let's let's see what the Omega Assembly well, puts out. This this is a critical turn here for Ant. He's, he's oh. able to actually find a spot to clear out board and fit in the first Omega Assembly. Right. And still and actually force their opponent to react to it. Because Scorpion Medic actually does have a target here. And then you can can you magnetize it with anything here? Well, I'm looking it's at the hero power clearing out board, right? Oh yeah, the hero power, of course. Something I one one. They've kept using the hero power turn after turn. Think about it, it's just not an overwhelming amount of things that happen with this. I mean, it is the true essence of an attrition style. So Ant wants stuff on board. He wants more stuff rather than less stuff. Oh, he's giving time to his opponent. But no further minion to play. This is like the first time that Rainy Hour has listened. <laughs> Don't evolve it. Don't touch it. No. Don't you dare do it. They know. Warrior's playing so no! oh. You give me that. You give me that Dr. Morgan back. I mean, they do have uh, removal for the Deathwing. I, I get where they're at. Uh, they need to threaten their opponent. I think Dr. Morgan's more threatening. Maybe it was almost dead on. It was just dead on board, right? Because of the laser and the two one. And they don't want to fatigue any faster. Yeah, that's true. If you don't get the optimal scenario of Dr. Morgan copies, you end up pulling more minions from your deck. Well, you may just end up like this. May be like a situation where you just it goes downhill, though. You know, this may not be recoverable from this state. It's it's already been free downhill for a while. Ever since Dr. Boom came up and has been generating value off of the, the hero power. Hackathon has been also hanging in there too, but you know, the Shaman's down to the last few cards. I wanted Eureka there so bad, just because I wanted, to, I wanted to see this unstable evolution go round two. Oh yeah, that'd be so funny. Yeah, that's not a fun lightning storm. I don't know how many more minions they have, though, to even utilize on Stable Evolution. They might just simply have all spells, which is not the way to win. They want to maximize on Stable Evolution. I don't know what's remaining in their deck. The team has gone far longer than we've anticipated it to be. And Ant just going to keep killing everything. Right, hero power, some of the 1-1s. One -ones. And then, based off the line of play, that's all you really need to do. Like, you know, we've seen um, Ants uh, just basically clear off and then pass and just let their opponent try to react. Not much more needs to be done. Just hero power. Or, sorry, you can just pass. Okay. Okay. All right, Mecharoo. I know you started out as a 1-1, one -one, but we got some work to... On you. Evolve to a seven mana minion. Stick around for one turn. Yeah, with the fork lightning gives you availability to push up to nine mana. Or does it? Or does it? I mean, the Scorpomatic <laughs> ultimate counter to Mecha Room. <laughs> wow. Imagine if that thing had Rush. That card would be a lot better. He's gonna preserve the health. He doesn't even want the damage. I think the Ant realizes what's important here is to just drain the I'm point of resources. Out of cards. Yeah, I think that Dr. Morgan would be really good right around now. You just need a way to keep going. Yes. And we're down to the final few chances. Oh, Calamos. But you know, Warrior has so many removal tools.
So they can play Kalamos next turn, and then if they can stick Kalamos, they can win Fury. A path dimly lit. Dimly lit is correct, Agatha. So they have to be careful of Overload. They can zap to clear up their hand space. They want to keep the other elemental for unstable, right? Are these going to evolve this with Thrall Destiny? Yeah, they're done with uh, Hagatha generating spells. They're like, yeah, we're done with you, Hagatha. I think their best card is like Stranglethorn Titan. Oh, no, it's, it's a three tag. I was thinking three. Uh, okay. Lifesteal might be useful-ish. Oh, it's not sticking around. Yeah. Four da five damage divided it's randomly among non-mech units. Yeah, it's like therapy cost. for all the times Mad Bomber has just gone wrong. <laughs> it's just like, it does exactly what you want to do a lot of times when you play this mech. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh, no! Uh-oh. All right, Thrall, step in. Step in, Thrall. <laughs> Wait, they get to burn. Do they? Yes. Congrats! Nice. Get to burn one nice. card. You'll be just like oh, me. that's nice. And here we get a tour of Hearthstone's arena format. <laughs> Cards that you will never see in constructed, but might see if you click the bottom button <laughs> in the loading screen. Say a Thresh Town's not bad. I'm, I'm just saying, when you consider stopping right here, like. That's when you know you've hit the bottom of the barrel. And box. We need something really big. Tour of the arena. No, that's the worst minion possible. Oh my gosh. I, I can't think. Rugurin's like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's time to jet. Oopsie. An ant has successfully they done it. They burned the death coil they shuffled in. That that's gonna do it. Oh now he can evolve too! Dr. Oh. Morgan him back! Yes! Punish him! What do you want? Uh Morgan Abomination. Alright. Grand Arvis! Keep it! Keep it! No. I, I wanna see Okay, that's good too. Oh yeah. Keep yeah. that. Keep that. Alright. Alright, little Bex. Let's see what you got. Good on Rainy Hour to stick through it. He could easily concede at this point and be justified, but he wants to see what's behind the box. Oh. Augmented Alec. Ooh, the old dead man's hand. <laughs> dead man's hand on the That's so funny. That does not have lifesteal, unfortunately. Hey, you can nice. draw a combo card. Gets to kill that, that stupid dragon thing. Shut up. He's gonna kill his one ones at the end of the turn. It's only damage. Only damage. Oh, it's only damage. Yeah. All right. Morini Hour accept his defeat. Oh, it hurts so bad. By the elements. <laughs> Make the one one. Diary is like, okay, I'm just gonna play for you. <laughs> Upgrade to Doomsayer. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. This game is tragic. Ant still can't win yet. He can gain 14 life though. Twice. <laughs> these these are very symmetrical looking boards. He could gain could gain 28 life and clear the this board. This would be a good time for a master plan. You know what I would actually really like is if he just did all this and then Reckless flared everything away. <laughs> just nuked the board for 45. I want it so badly now. Oh, you can it. bounce back the, the driver's score and gain more armor. And then Reckless Flurry. That is actually your win condition. <laughs> yes! Come on! Okay, in his mind, he's thinking how he, he can make sure not to throw this game away, but I think that's pretty oh, hilarious to do that thing. Thing. Well, the one way you can lose... Now, nah, there's no way. I'm, I'm going to oh. stop thinking about it. Oh. 
He's actually just clearing the board. Okay, I was like, dude, can you just do it? But he wants that dub. Right. I don't blame him either. He went down 0-2. Pick up the dub. From the very beginning, we saw Shaman keep Agatha, but it just was not enough. They're anywhere close. Warrior outlasts the Shaman, just according to your prediction. And man, story of what ifs, you know, like what if that was a Tarantus instead of a Deathwing with the unstable illusion? Ooh. What if they could double evolve both of those 10 drops? Dalaran, nobody ever kills Dalaran Mage. Mini Hour just kind of uh, showing Ant what he had in his hand. That's going to wrap it up. These. Finally, the series has come to a conclusion as uh, Erica gets a, a little bit of hope back, but Korea, once again, is the series and is our current leader for the Boomsday Invitational. What an insane-looking game. That was really fun. If you if you go back and only caught half of that, I highly encourage you to re-watch that game. It was really fun from start to finish. That's